I want to make the distinction clear between a total, uh, which is usually written with an ordinary d, and a partial uh, with a round d derivative. And it's you can't really make this distinction until we carefully until we know the chain rule. So let me go back to an example that I've talked about in class where we have a bug crawling. Let's see if I can make, draw, draw a bug here. The bug's crawling on a plate, some path, and that plate has maybe some hot parts, some warm parts, some cool parts. Um, it's got a differing temperatures around the whole plate, and we want to know how fast is the bug's temperature changing. So what we've got, way in the previous case, we had T equals F of X and Y, X equals G of T, and Y equals H of T. And if we wanted to find the derivative of T with respect to T, uh, let's draw the tree diagram. Oops, this depends on X and Y. These depend on T. And this is through F, this is G, this is H. Then we had our first most basic case of the chain rule, like this. But there's something unrealistic about this situation, and that is the assumption that the temperature of the plate is not changing in time. And if you think about, wait a minute, if the temperature is not changing in time, then what does dt dt mean? Well, dt by dt in this case really means if t is f of x, y, and then they depend on t. So really t equals f of g of t, h of t. If that's what I mean by temperature, I mean the temperature of the bug as it moves, then it can change with time because the bug is moving and the temperature is not uniform across the plate. But wait a minute, what if the temperature was also changing in time? What if somebody's actually heating up this hot plate or cooling it down? And so the temperature is actually f a function of x, y, and t directly, as well as the temperature of the bug depending indirectly on the time through the position of the bug. So that's the new situation. So this was the old situation. The new situation is t is a function of x, y, and t. And I want to know, so the, but the temperature of, the of, of any point on the plate can be changing as a function of time, and the bug is moving around the plate. And so there's going to be two different reasons, well, kind of three different reasons, why the te bug's temperature is changing. Its x position is changing, its y position is changing, and the time is changing. And here's where it makes a really big difference, whether we talk about par partial of temperature with respect to time versus the total derivative of the temperature with respect to time. These are different quantities. They have very different significance, and they're going to be different numbers. This says, look at this function of three variables. And partial means, the most important thing about a partial derivative is actually what is not included in the notation. This means take the temperature, vary the time, and keep x and y constant. That's what this notation means. If we put a bar and we just put the variables here, we don't put equals anything, but if we just put the variables here, we're reminding ourselves we're holding those variables constant. And that means don't let the bug move. Don't think about a bug at all. This has nothing to do with the bug. It only has to do with this function. And so, in some ways, a better notation is to say, look, f is only about the top level of the tree here. It's just about how f, uh, the temperature depends on position and time, and it doesn't reference any moving bugs at all. This is f sub t. So these guys are the same thing. And it's what happens if I just look at how the temperature of the plate depends on position and time, and I don't let position move. I just look at the time. Whereas this guy, if you write down, if you just told me big T is a function of x, y, and t, and then you said calculate ordinary d of temperature with respect to time, I'd say that doesn't make any sense. This isn't a one, a one variable function. You must mean a partial derivative. But then you'd say, oh wait, I forgot to tell you, x and y are functions of t as well. And so the new setup completely is temperature is a function of position of time, and we still have x and y are functions of time as well. 
Now it makes sense to, to ask the very same question. As the bug moves, how fast is his temperature changing? And there's going to be three reasons why it can change instead of just two and before. Like here were the, were the two reasons before. The, temp the position is changing in x, the position is changing in y, and the time is changing. Now, as long as you make, have the distinction clear, it's not really that hard to set this up as a standard chain rule problem, because what have we got? We just draw our tree. t is a function of x and y and t. x is a function of t, y is a function of t, and you know what? t is a function of t as well, just by the identity function. It doesn't do anything. This is all f now. This is g still, this is h still, and this is something I'm not even going to name because it's so silly, it's just the identity function. But it, it really is a piece of the puzzle. So now dt dt is going to have three contributions. It's going to be how sensitive is the temperature to a change in x times how fast the bug's moving in x, plus how fast is how sensitive is the temperature to a y position times how fast is the bug moving in y, plus how sensitive is the temperature moving temperature to a change in time without any position change times dt dt, which is 1. And so this is the relationship between these two quantities. The total derivative, which accounts for all the ways, direct and indirect, of how the temperature could depend on time. And that's the, the total derivative, and here's just the direct dependence on time. So the total is the indirect plus the direct, basically. Let me just write that down. Total derivative is the indirect dependence of this final quantity on the initial quantity, which involves non-trivial chain rule stuff multiplied together, plus the direct dependence. You won't see this terminology too much in a book, but it's a pretty accurate thing, that, that, that temperature, in this case, depends directly on time and indirectly on time. Okay, so this is, um, there's similar versions of this that, that are um, very big sources of confusion, but this is probably the best one to start with. And again, the, the, one of the key things to recognize is that the total derivative, I let t vary, and if in my situation that makes x and y vary as well, because we've really got this situation, if by letting t vary, I, I, h, the x and y are going to vary as well, then I have to make a choice. Do I just let t vary and I artificially set these to be constant, or do I really pay attention to everything the bug's doing, that the time's changing, and therefore the x position's changing, and therefore the y position's changing? And again, a really important thing is just to, to address that they're both interesting quantities, and they're answering totally different questions. The partial, there's no bug. There's no... Uh, this is just about the hot plate and what it's doing. The total derivative doesn't even make sense unless you put the bug in the picture. And then it's addressing what does the, the bug actually experience, as opposed to what does a fixed thermometer stuck at a particular fixed x and y position on the plate experience. So um, that's, that's a lead into the next lecture, or the next uh, video, which is about the, uh, which is about implicit differentiation.